maybe the smart move here is to get some education under my belt and, and try and make a career of football. Um, I didn't make it as a footballer, but the, the one aim for me was to get off the estate. Welcome back to another episode of Marvin Herbert's Nothing But The Truth. Um, today we've got um, uh, a very good friend, partner and business. Yeah, a very good friend, partner and family member. There we go, because me and Robert have been through not hell and back, but business hell and back. We've been up and down, round and round, and we've been at the depths of despair, but we've marched on and we've actually achieved something amazing together. And uh, we've gone upwards and onwards to greater and better things, helping not just ourselves, not just the people in our environment, but people globally. So without further ado, <laughs> Yeah, no, because uh, and what you want to understand is I want to show you some before and after pictures of Robert. Now, when I show you the before pictures, you're going to say, Wah! Wah! <laughs> because I'm telling you now, when Robert looks in the mirror now, you can't believe it. <laughs> it's been, been, a, been a hard journey, no, been no, a but, long no, journey. No, it's, but... it's been a good journey, though, yeah, man. Yeah, right? yeah, it's been absolutely. a good journey, man. Do you know yeah. what? When you see the picture, you're going to you're gonna understand why we're smiling, right? Yeah. And it's... This is hard work, determination, and a little bit of marv, right? <laughs> Guaranteed, right? So, obviously, so everybody can get a clear understanding of who you are, where you've been, what you've been up to, and how we met, how we've developed this relationship. Sure. I'll leave it up to you to tell my guests. Thanks. It's a privilege to be on, on this show. And um, obviously, over the last few years, I've really got to know Marvin really well. And we've been working on a number of projects, but mainly a massive football academy project which has helped hundreds and hundreds of players and uh, it's, it's just been an incredible last say I don't know seven eight years actually now it's incredible well, the years are flying by but um, yeah I met I met Marvin actually um, about it was about seven years ago I think in Spain um, and it was just after well let's 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 go uh, back a little bit go further. Further. Let's, go, let's go back into you okay right because me and me part of the not downward spiral, it's just, it's just, it's just the, 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 you know when you get onto that, the part of the race when it's all downhill? Yeah. Like, that's our meeting started when every, I believe that's where everything yeah. in your life started going back downhill. Mm, and yeah. that was the meeting. Was so that's the transition. That's where we're going to start talking from yeah. there. But let's talk about where you come from, what you've done and yeah. how you became the Robert Easton that I met. Okay, well, I, I mean, I grew up uh, in Finchley, East Finchley on the estate there. Um, Italian, uh, my mother's Italian, my father's English, uh, ducker and diver, my, my old man was a, was, a, was, a, was a ducker and diver, but my grandfather who was on the Italian side, he was a bigger figure in the 50s, he did a number of uh, um, um, things in the 50s. Which you said you were a bit modest there though, well, you've been a bit modest. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, I guess like, my mum had a t very, very tough time growing up in London as an Italian, especially after the war, and she was bullied a lot, and, and, and the Italians were, were not treated great. Uh, so she, it's a, not a story she likes me to tell, but my grandfather ended up uh, you know, being one of the chaps in the West End um, and ended up uh, uh, doing one of the biggest robberies in, in London, which was the Maples robbery. His name was Titch Di Martino. He did it with a man called Alfred Hines. It's quite a famous uh, robbery. Uh, and um, yeah, it was quite audacious, you know, in those days it was they blew up the safe and all that game with Jell Ignite and all that kind of stuff. It's like an old, old movie. In fact, they're making a movie of it. Well, they do say every empire started at <laughs> a crime, right? <laughs> Maybe, so, yeah. no, what I'm saying is, that, yeah. again, I've just noticed a bit of synergy that I mm. never knew. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I knew about the association with other certain Italian members, but you bloodline connected like it's all started from something a little bit quirky which is yeah. nice to know it's nice to know yeah and like you know we grew up in a council flat um and um my brother was into uh acting and drama i, I love football um people came and went boxes came in the flat and went out of the flat <laughs> you know we didn't ask any questions but some christmases the presents were good and other christmases it was they, they were terrible you know what i mean it was there was no there was no presents but um one thing that was always consistent for me was football. I love football. I, I, I lived and breathed it. 
went out. Uh, we had a post office wall around the corner, and I used to just kick the ball against the post. Was office it a wall. loving home you come from? Um, yeah, w- it wasn't a bad in terms of, 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 of a loving environment. It wasn't too bad actually. I mean, my dad wasn't there a lot. Um, my mother was always there for us. Um, I had my sister as well. She always kind of looked out for me. Um, and I have to say, yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't bad, and the community wasn't bad. Like the estate we were on. Um, was was um, had a, a, a grass area, so there was a lot of sport being played. Yeah, a lot yeah. of the kids got out there and did lots of football, cricket, whatever we could do. We just made up games. You know, used to make up games yeah, in them yeah. days. British Bulldogs and all that, and uh, the Killable. one where you went, when one where you went out and hid and all that. Um, but for me, it was just football, 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 football. I woke up with a ball, I went to bed with a ball. Uh, and, I, and I managed to um, play at a good level when I was at school, and I was good at school. Uh, I enjoyed school. I was I was good academically. My brother was terrible, and I don't know whether because I saw my brother go through a lot of bad times, like you know, always in trouble, always always getting into trouble. I kind of thought maybe the smart move here is to get some education under my belt, and and try and make a career of football. Um, I didn't make it as a footballer, but the the one aim for me was to get off the estate. You know, I saw. You say you never made it as a footballer, but mm. you did get through Played certain level. levels. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? To say you never made it as a footballer, right? Yeah. I have to stop you there because some people are not made for playing the game. Yeah. Some people are made for making the game. Yeah. And I believe, after what I've known about you and come to get to know you for, like, you're a brilliant tactician. Like, we started a football academy. And we played against the Premier League football teams. And we drew until they brought on their first team players. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And this is because of a mindset and a training ability that you had of putting bunches of kids together to go and play Premier League football players. Yeah. And they competed at a very high level. So to say you never made it as a footballer, I think you're under crediting yourself. Like, I don't think... You made it as the footballer you wanted to be, but the yeah. contribution you was made to add to the football, I think you've done that hands down, Robert. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I loved it, so it didn't matter to me. I just loved playing football. And, and that shows even till today. Yeah, no, I still have the same love today. I mean, it has never gone. Um, and I'll tell you what else he's good at as well. Squash. Badminton. Right? No, Badminton, <laughs> that's it. Badminton, Badminton. Right, now, I played Robert when you was maybe 21 stone. A bit heavier, I think. A bit heavier. <laughs> Yeah, and I thought, oh, here we go. Yeah, I'll play you at Babbitt, mate. I thought, oh, I'll have him all over the court, yeah. And I'm good at Babbitt, I'm pretty decent, trust me, yeah. And I thought I was going to have him vomiting and also, but no, 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 no. No, we've, no you are an athlete. Bab- always no, played Babbitt. But you're an athlete like, yeah. at heart, yeah. do you understand? So everything you do, you do at the highest level, and I've yeah. noticed that. Yeah. Like, your weight never got in the way of you achieving. No. Um, your weight never got in the way of you demanding or sort of coaching a football team. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Your weight never got in the way of you living life. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So where you've been and what you've done and what you've come through is phenomenal. And what is apparent and clear is that that unchallenging work ethic that you've got. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because that work ethic, that drive, that never giving up, yeah. that's just a testament in itself. And I noticed that in you because I have it in me. Do you know what I mean? And it's it's nice to see someone do so well at something they love. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when I see you in the football. Like, because I'm a very dominating person, right? But I couldn't come in that football world and dominate it the way you do or control it the way you do or have a say the way you do. Yeah. That's why when I come, I'm just like the little fly on the wall. And I just watch you do your stuff and I just think, you know what? I don't know how they, I don't know how you get it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's got to come from within. Like the same with you with boxing and and inspiring young people. It just comes from within you. Like you know, I mean, it's not something that you go to a, a footballer and try to pretend. It's either in you or it's not in you. And uh, for me, it was all about getting off that estate. I, I I wanted better things in my life. I wanted to to achieve. I mean, I was watching people at that time getting into a lot of trouble, glue sniffing and taking drugs and committing crimes. And, and these were all good players, like people that were playing football with me. Um, I just wanted to get out of there. And, and I used to go to the West End. In them days, you'd get a ticket on the bus, which was all day. Red bus, a Red Rover. bus Rover. 
and you'd I'd 30p. End up 30p or whatever it was and just go on a bus all around London. I used to just love going to the West End and walking around the streets and looking at the theatres and looking at Covent Garden and whatever. And Again, another familiar trait. Yeah. They're things I used to do right? yeah. as a kid. Do you know what I mean, I used to get a red bus rover, yeah. Saturday morning, and I was out. Yeah. And that was it, I was gone. For, until my mum and dad got a phone call from whoever saying we just found your son. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. You get back late, get into trouble, getting back yeah. late, always. But um, My dad used to come pick me up and give me an idea on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I was very lucky because I had some older uh, friends. My sister had a boyfriend at the time. Uh, and uh, he, his mother had a shop in a, a little gift shop in a hotel in London and gave me a job part-time in the school holidays. Yeah. It was a cigar shop. Uh, and people would come in, buy magazines and shoot cigars. It was boring, but it, it was great being in a hotel, watching everyone coming in and out of the hotel, for a uh, four-star hotel, five-star hotel at the time. What happened was, was my career as a footballer was obviously over. I was only playing for, for pleasure um, socially. I wanted to get, you know, get into work, earn some money. Um, and one, one day a guy came in to buy some cigars and he said... Uh, um, he looked unhappy, and I always saw this guy, he always looked happy. I said, what's, what's the matter? He said, I want tickets for a Vita, uh, but I can't get them. The concierge can't get them, and I really want them. My brother at the time was a, was a dancer and an actor, and he was in the show. Oh, he was an understudy. And I said, well, look, I could ask my brother, you know, it, maybe he can get them. And the uh, guy said, look, if you get them, I'll give you a, 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 you know, a tip. So I thought, fine. So I called my brother and he managed to get a couple of tickets, give them to the guy. He gave me a £50 tip. And what like year was that? 1983. Wow. To me, it was like a million pounds. I mean, I couldn't believe it. That was when they were it. red as well. Yeah, all green. yeah. Like, I didn't even know what it was. But I they were green like, then, weren't they? they were God green knows, then. it was like, it was, a, it was the biggest thing I've ever seen. So yeah. I thought, my God, well, maybe. So I asked uh, my friend's mum, do you mind if I put a little sign in the window saying tickets for a Vita? Yeah because it might encourage more people to buy cigars and buy everything. Yeah, okay, do it. And, you know, it started to uh, to to get more people asking. How old was you then? Uh, I was about 17 then. Um, and um, my the my girlfriend's boyfriend, uh, my, my sister's boyfriend, sort of saw an opportunity there. He got right into the tickets. Uh, he said, let's get a desk on the front and... You could work in the school holidays. <laughs> and and next thing you know, oh, we, we start wow, cracking you got on. Wow, you're grooved straight away. Yeah, 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 coming yeah. to it. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. The and notes must have been flashing in uh, his brain. It was unbelievable. Away. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like I, I could go up the West End all the time. School holidays were great. I'd had money in my pocket. Um, you know, and 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 he was the sort of person. You know what my next question was? Yeah. How did you get into the ticket game? Right? It's just that's it's so Yeah, that, that was it. It just came. It came like that. So. Um, I, I rode along with him then. He went and got a shop in Covent Garden, See, well, got maybe, something in Soho. Right, right, right. You know. like what's triggering in my mind mm. is grooming. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How you got manipulated as a kid, yeah. do you know what I mean? Off an idea, yeah. rather than brought in as a partner, grown as a company. And, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, although you went down a, a, another route and you got where you were, like, if everybody done things with the right mindset and the right strategy, then everybody would rise together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Rather than them looking at you as a way for him to make money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because that's all that happened, really, wasn't it? Well, he was very generous to me. So no, 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 no. See, as a saying, way for me to make money he was also. generous for you as a kid. <laughs> yeah. But it's like what I'm saying to about all these people that come up with these ideas now and just nick the ideas off people and yeah. then go and make fucking hundreds of millions of pounds. Yeah. And then someone's went, I started that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's the same. So now what I do when I'm thinking about things, I think of how can we all grow together so yeah. we're all the same. Yeah. It's not about any governor, but yeah. What I loved at the time was just watching how people then sold themselves, if you like. You know, watching people come in the hotel... I saw business come in. I saw the way they were grafting at the at the uh, you know at the tea room. I saw people like women come in. They were grafted. There was all kinds of grafters coming in, and the West End became this kind of magical place where when you walked around the streets, you'd go around the back of Leicester Square and watch the Chinese grafting. You'd watch the you know go in Soho, Soho and watch people grafting. Man, I was all the same. Yeah, yeah. Watching, it, 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 it was, was just, just like, like this whole new world, world. And, 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 and and every day. You, you can, can find, find a way, way to, to make some money or get involved in something. Um, so, luckily, tickets did really well. I mean, and it was a golden time. It was, it, it was at the time where 
it changed, changed from, from people selling, selling it on the street, the street yeah. to, to then, then going into a shop or an office and selling it. Yeah, because that transition, I was, I was part of that transition because I remember the ticket touting starting on the street. Yeah. And I remember everyone making a few quid. I remember a few hostile situations we used to kick off with viable tires yeah. and that chap, you know, it was off, it was off. Yeah. And then a few people got their own um, ticket agents. That's right. And that was like 87, 88. Correct, yeah. Mid-87, right. And uh, I remember I'm going down, down the office, I'm like, what office? Oh, mate, he's got an office. What is he doing out there? Selling tickets? What is he selling tickets for? Yeah. Like, I couldn't get it because I was a hard at it, other criminal yeah. activities. But then I actually remember the ticket offices opening up. Do you know what I mean? It was great fun, it was great times, and the one thing I loved was going to events. So for me, it was about selling tickets and making money, but also I loved being at the match. I loved being at the match. No, you barely said. No, I loved it. I mean, I lived and breathed going to football. Uh, I went to away games, I went to Europe. Um, I went to... And I love tennis. Now, Rose will tell you, it's not just the football, no. right? Because it's every sport and activity. Like, that's why I used to love the tag for, because it's... I used to go to every Wimbledon, mm. like the FA Cups, like anything you want, you're going. Do you know what I mean? And that was the beautiful thing about it. So that must have been like a, a dream come true for someone like yourself, really, isn't it? It was. It was like, I mean, my, the first event I ever went to was Evil Knievel at Wembley Stadium when he jumped the double deck of uh, buses. For me, that was just like a live, like this guy is going to throw himself over 16 buses and could kill himself. Live. So, so, like, you know, you can't, these aren't things, things that are kind of a movie which you watch over and over. What's the best show you've ever been to? That, that was the most, like, impression on me as, as a live event. event. But, but then, then when I went to Wimbledon the first time, I saw McEnroe, and, and, and it was like, in, you were in a little living room, and it was so quiet, and no one said a word, and then the next thing you know, he'd be throwing a racket and screaming, and, and I thought, wow, this is just... I'll be, I'll be, you know, when, when I went to Wimbledon, I think you got me the tickets. Yeah. And I was in next to the Royal Box next yeah. to Prince William. That's right. I was in next to yeah. Prince William and Meghan. Yeah. It was right next to us. I was like, right, I'd take, take pictures of it. And look how close I was to the Royal Family. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, we nice. actually helped to a tennis player as well, you know, Destiny. Uh, Destiny uh, coming through. I mean, that was, that was a good thing to be involved in. Um, where well, we, we helped her to, 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 to get them. She played, played, them. She's now, played we'll yeah, Coco we'll Goff, who, who, who's like number one now. But anyway, um, no, went to a lot of events and, and, and really you couldn't wish for a better life. I mean, you know, I was, I was getting money. I was, uh, I was out and about in London um, and still playing football and, you know, enjoying so what London you, had. You said that you started off um, ducking and diving and... Gary, did you ever get any brushes with the law? Not really. No. no. Um, uh, I saw other friends did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, was... and, I, and I kind of, you know, I, it's, if I have to be honest, it scared me. I didn't want to get yeah. into trouble. Um, no, you never, you've never come across as the walking along the landing type. <laughs> no. I guess, like, I'm a good talker, so I always thought whenever, like, if we were, like, a group and the police came, I could talk my way out of it. Yeah. So I managed to, if ever I got stopped, you know, I'd always be able to talk my way out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I was always lucky in terms of avoiding... Clever, yeah. rather than luck. Maybe, yeah. Well, I was always the aggressive one, always getting nicked and bent up. Well, I noticed that people did that and it didn't work out yeah, that's what I was saying. I was, I, was, I was always that guy. What are yeah. you talking to? What are you on about? No, I ain't moving. Fuck off. What's the matter with you? And then having the rat. And then you end up in the police station thinking, I wish I'd have listened to them lot. Yeah. Listen to the, the old boys are Marv, Marv, calm down, relax, he ain't worth it. What are you talking about? He ain't worth it. He's a mug, man. Like, Marv, he ain't worth it. Yeah. When you see the police station, you're thinking, I wish I would listen to that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. I loved going to the boxing, uh, and that's when I got close to my dad, because I didn't really see a lot of my dad growing up. But you kind of can, I connected in one thing. He loved boxing, and I, they used to have boxing nearly every week at the Albert Hall. Royal Albert Hall was the yeah. best venue for boxing ever. I think, but yeah, even yeah, the, yeah. the garden in New York. Uh, and I saw all, all the kind of greats of that time, which was, you know. Well, you actually went to all the boxing matches. I went yeah. every week with him. Sick. And saw Kurt So you got Lang. some good memories as well, really. Great memories, you know, of memories, them. memories, man. Yeah. Let's say you don't get that fucking, what's it called? When you get. Um, Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, know, you know what you should do? You should document all your yeah. memories now. I used like. to have all the ticket stubs. So I've got all my ticket yeah. stubs and all the um, phones, but I'm sure there's actually, do, do memoirs now, Bob, yeah. because so was, if you could just have flashback videos, pictures of just of the 
time. Like, yeah. The storyboard, like, because mm. from what we've been through over the last four years, five yeah. years, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, and that's as the companies took off. What it took to build the company, the two, three years prior to that was the hard graft that we put in. Yeah. But the actual development of the company, which is all you're doing, man. Yeah. Like, I never thought we'd get as big as this. Do you know what I mean? No, like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's growing globally. And I think, like, fast forwarding to when to our, to the situation where I met you, um, like, things went really well for me in tickets. I got my own company, my own business, built it, and made a, you know, turned over a lot of money. Became probably one of the biggest, actually, um, at one point. Um, but, you know, the, 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 the bad time came, and it was after uh, the Olympics, actually, 2012. And to tell you the truth, in a nutshell, I was just burnt out just completely burnt out, uh, years and years of banging away at, at grafting tickets. And, you know, one of the things with that is that there's a date on tickets. It was stress. There was a lot of money, a lot of stress, a lot of time, a lot of time away from home. Um, and, um, you know, times where you had to, um, y you know, things, th things you'd lose a lot of money on certain things. You'd win a lot of money. There was people involved, partners involved, you know, and stress, basic, basically stress. So all that had an impact on the family. Had an impact on me and my family. I ended up getting a divorce, um, uh, which again sent me into a little bit more of a spiral. Um, and it was just bad times. Like you know, I became unwell, um, and and uh, got to the point where I ended up in hospital. And this was around about 2013, and was very very sick. Um, I had, I had stress induced addiction. I had I had um, um, hyperglycemia. I had um, the thing where you had no oxygen and you know i was lying in a hospital bed with very little left in, le left inside me and a few handful of friends who who came you know to the bedside and sort of like you know was was, willed, was on. willed me on um somehow i mean my doctor who i still Not somehow well today i still how he he he, uh, he still calls me the ghost you know, they, they didn't give me long in that uh, hotel that, uh, in that hospital hotel um it was actually a private hospital, so it was a bit like a hotel. But, um, you know, I, I came out of there and I was pretty much done. I was now three or four stone overweight. I was, um, I lost a lot of money. Um, I was depressed, uh, you know, and, and basically the dream that I thought was a dream, like building up companies, building up family, building up everything, kind of left me really empty. It was like it was, it was something was missing, uh, and I didn't quite know what it was. But I become you know lost, and I was and I was and unwell. I was I was suggested to a, fr a friend of mine suggested, look, why don't you go away? Why don't you like sell up this, sell up that, and, and get out, and go away, have a change of scenery, have a change of environment. Like you know, you 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 need to do something like to to shift. Yeah. Uh, and I had a very good friend of mine, a guy who I met in Brazil many years before, who was a trainer for a lot of athletes. And very, he came from a street gang in Brazil. He was hardcore kind of young guy, and he was coaching and training in Florida. And he said, "Look, come over, stay with me." And I got there, and I was then at that point twenty six and a half stone. I'd put on nearly eight or nine stone in weight, and I could hardly walk. In all fairness. Mm -hmm. Um, and the very first day I remember when I got there, he was a bit shocked, and I, I and I looked a wreck. Uh, and this, I, I was a person who maybe ten years before that was, you know, sixteen, seventeen stone, wearing Armani suits, and I was in the West End and yeah. eating at the, you know, the Ivy, you know. Um, now I've got this, you know, gigantic tracksuit on, and I looked, my eyes were drooping, hair falling out, um, and I got to Florida, and he, the very first thing he did would say we're going to walk up a hill and I thought what's that going to do like I've come here like I want to get well but walk, walk up a hill what's that going to do and he said if you can get up this hill it's going to be a massive thing and we're going to do it nearly every day until you can get up there and I said well go on then let's do it you know I thought like this is a waste of time but let's do it I'm now like 5,000 miles away from home, away from family, away from friends, got no money, got no anything, and I'm now walking up a hill, 28 stone. <laughs> in the boiling heat, by the way, if you've ever been to Florida, it's, yeah. it was 30 whatever degrees. I must have gone about a, a 
quarter of the way up there and stopped. So I said, like, mate, I can't, I'm, I'm going to have a heart attack or something. He said, fine, let's, let's stop here. We marked it. Tomorrow we're going to walk a bit further. Cut a long story short, I made it to the top of that hill within two weeks. And I knocked a stone off in a month. And I went to meetings and I went to anything that could help me mentally. I went to the Samaritan Salvation Army. I went to places where, where I could hear people speak, motivational speakers. Uh, and I didn't drink. I didn't do any drugs. I didn't do any. Uh, I, I, I watched what I was eating. And I stayed there for three months. And I started to feel better. And the, the fog started to lift a bit. Yeah. And there was a team, a football team there called Chivas. It was a bu little bunch of Mexican kids who were right wrong ones, actually, right? They were all up to no good, being chased by the old Bill and everything. And this coach of them said, the uh, owner of it said, look, uh, I hear you can coach soccer. And I did. Years ago, I took my badge, you know, yeah. when I finished. And he said, would you mind coaching? And I, thought, I looked at him. It was like this old piece of grass, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and a bunch of, like, renegade Mexicans. I said, well, go on. But I liked them. They had something yeah. that reminded me of when I was on the estate. Yeah. And I said to them, no, I ain't like a coach like your normal coaches. Like, if you need any help with anything, if you get nicked, if you're in trouble or whatever, don't matter if it's three in the morning, four in the morning, I'll come out. They'd not heard that from a coach. I said, but do me a favour. If I do that, put a shift in for me in the session. And they were good. And this guy said, we've got this huge match coming up against this top Brazilian team and, and, and we're going to get killed and I'm going to be embarrassed. And I said, no, you won't, mate. They've got something, these kids. They've got spirit and they've got skill and we're going to pull it together. And he, was, he kind of looked at me like I was a bit mad. I mean, don't forget, I'm 27 stone now and I am looking a bit mad. Um, but I, I brought a couple of lads over from London who'd been, who'd been released out of a club or not quite made it. I said, look, come over. Because, like, you could help me with this. Like, you're good lads, like, strong players. And we, we got them together. And we played Botafogo of Brazil, who are the, one of the top, like, the Man United of Brazil yeah. at ING. And we beat them 1-0. And this guy at the end of it said, I can't quite believe this. I said, well, believe it. And he said, well, we've got the biggest tournament in Florida coming up. Would you come back? So I had to go home. It was three months yeah. I'd done. He said, Would, if I pay for you to come back, will you come back? I said, yeah. I thought, I've got nothing to go home for. There's no more tickets at the minute and no more nothing. I might as well come back. So I went back. And now I'm 20, sort of six and a half stone, but still huge. Uh, but clear-headed. And like my work ethic came back to me like when I started tickets. And, yeah. when, and we went and won that tournament. And we just didn't win that tournament. We went and won the next 10 tournaments. And we became, uh, went from number 1,000 in America to the top 10 in America. And I thought, you know what I want to do? I want to start um, a business of, of uh, bringing players from England with the Mexican kids, put them together, and we'll go and beat anyone. And we can get them into university, and we can help players who, who didn't make it as a footballer like I didn't make it. Now, just rewind... A year before I went to America, I came over to Spain. A couple of guys in the ticket business had come over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know what I was doing there or, or whatever. But one day I, I came to your gym there where they were all hanging out. And um, it was just after I'd done some charity work for the Spirit of London, which was helping young people. Yeah, yeah. And I met you at that gym. Um, you were... Uh, uh, sparring. I didn't notice anything remarkable about the gym, except you sparring. Yeah. The thing I was told a lot about the gym, but <clears throat> I, I, when I got there, I was kind of underwhelmed a little bit. I thought, "This is it." But you were sparring, and that was where my focus got to, because you were this, you were giving this young boxer a thorough, uh, so we say, education. Yeah. Um, there was no nonsense, and uh, afterwards. You, were, you you came you were walked over to the where the dressing room was and I was just sitting on my own, but you made a point of speaking to me. Now I was kind of nobody at that point. I was I was overweight. I was sitting in a corner. I was no one. But you were curious, and you started talking. And I mentioned about the tickets and Spirit of London awards and trying to help young people. And I was fucked myself, but I think the thought that I was trying to help someone even though I was fucked 
led you to kind of speak to me and say you can do better for yourself and you can um, you can get fit and you can help yourself and you can uh, achieve more. And we, I think we spoke for about an hour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I remember coming the next day because I had a couple of friends said, "You, I want you to come and meet Marvin." Like, you know, he was fucking great the way he was talking to me. You know, and yeah, we had a good. How, how was it? Two, three weeks sessions then, wasn't it? Yeah. Then I was there was for a couple of weeks. Yeah. We had lunch outside and all that. And had a uh, few good sessions. Yeah, there. yeah. Did you even impressed me with your work ethic because while we we're in the gym. Yeah, you know, we 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 had a go. And ah, and do you know what was her name? Ah, it was someone's sister. Someone you come over with. Ah, oh, what's his name? It was up in Liverpool. Joe. Oh, Joe, yeah, yeah. Joe's sister. Yeah, yeah. I forgot her name now. But I went to do work with her school. I done work with her school before yeah. she left. Uh, year sevens and year eights. But yeah, it's mad how that's just sort of developed into other things as well, that visit. Well, what happened was, is that, like, there was, when we were talking, I remember we were talking a lot about helping young young people. Yeah, that's all it was about. And it, it was almost yeah. like everything else in the gym had, had kind of paled into insignificance. There was this kind of synergy of wanting to help young people. And I'm, you know, I was, no matter how things were good for me or bad for me or whatever, Growing up where I grew up, I just wanted to help young people and wanted to help footballers especially. Yeah. And you were wanting to help boxers. And you mentioned something about, well, well, we should do something one day, like bring some boxers, help some footballers and blah, blah, blah. And I left it at that. When I went to America and got this whole thing started with uh, Chivas, I came back to London for the summer. And I thought, well, I'm going to do a summer tour. I'm going to bring the Mexicans over to London and I'm going to do a big summer tour but I'm going to get a lot of footballers in. I need to speak to someone about, number one, growing this business. Number two, helping me with the uh, putting it all together. And three, more, most importantly, within a fraction of the time, being able to put together a football squad that are capable of playing some big teams. Yeah. And I saw you. I'll come and found you. And I think it was around the back of Barnet somewhere. I think you were living at the yeah, back of Barnet. Barnet somewhere. Yeah. And I mentioned it to you. And I said, look... I'm going to need a couple of quid to get the business going. Uh, I, I want to bring players over to London. I want to put together a big session in the summer. You took about 30 seconds to make your mind up. Now, the one thing for me that was great about that was not only did you have the belief in the idea, but you had belief in me. Um, and that was something which I think a few people had lost belief in me because of the way I'd lost my way. Yeah. But you, uh, thankfully... Well, Otherwise, you never see you work, though. Yeah, maybe. I mean, because I can honestly say this. If, if anyone does any work with you, they'll be able to see what value you bring. Do you know what I mean? So, when it was, when it was at that stage, I never thought, oh, so what? this is a chance I'm taking here. This is, you know what? He ain't going to give up. He ain't going to give up. And the worst that's going to happen is I'll get that back in X amount of time. I'll get that back in X amount. It wasn't, I'm never going to lose it. Do you know what I mean? And then when we started growing, I started thinking, well, hold on a bit, well, I'm missing out on it. Because I never understood business. And the next thing you know, it's smack my own wallet, Jam Sancho. Well, one of the things you did was um, you said, yeah, I'll do it with you, blah, blah, blah. And I thought you were going to start talking to me about how we got to do the football, how we got to do this. But what you did do was say, but you said, you've got to get fit and you've got to lose weight and you've got to do this. And I think you've got to, like, you can be much better. You can. And I took it a little bit personally because I thought to myself, well, I am who I am. So, like, why has there got to be conditions? But actually, I completely misread it because actually you just wanted the best, better for me. Yeah, you wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you, you understood that thing much more than I understood it. And um, you gave me a piece of paper, which I found, and this is obviously about six years old now, but it's like, um, I don't know if uh, the camera can see it, but... It's all handwritten. I'll get, I'll get it put out. And, it put and, out. and it's got like what I've got to eat and it's about putting spinach and beetroot and celery and uh, don't drink this and eat that and, uh, you know, uh, um, no milk, no sugar. At the time, I thought it was a bit, a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, a, a far-fetched. But funny enough, it didn't sink in straight away, but I, I took it and I kept it. But the thing that I loved about it was that this wasn't something you ripped out of a magazine. It, it, was, it was written. Yeah. And not, not just the on the corner of a, of a matchbox. There's two pages of it. 
So it's like how much you really believe like this and how much you really think about it. Because if I said, look, well, it's pretty simple for me, right? All I said to myself is, if he can put the same time into a diet than what he puts into football, he's going to be sick. I mean, and if I'm, I'm not gutted now, but I used to get frustrated that he used to drink a bit of milk or drink a little bit of sugar every now and then. What's the matter with this fucking guy? Don't you realise, if he just sticks to that, that'll go vroom in next to nothing. But because you've done it at your own time, your own pace, you've slimmed down amazingly. Well, when you see the pictures, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's amazing. Well, we played Watford that summer. Uh, and um, we played, uh, when I got to the ground, the, the great thing about having you there was that you had... A, Players coming from everywhere, all different social stratas, different race, different places, different uh, levels. And we had to get them all together in one go. And I thought, how are we going to do this? Fucking hell. I mean, it's like, you've got, we've got so many different people, it's going to take us forever. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you start, <laughs> you come in and went, right, come here, sit down and listen. And they all sat down and they all listened. And I went, that took about five minutes. And we had him in shape to play a Premier League club. Well, it's no joke, was it? I mean, it was about a two weeks. Well, the, the, the beautiful thing about that is that's just everybody doing what they're supposed to do, right? And everybody playing their part correctly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But if you, if you want to, like I'll oh, said to him, if you want to be a professional footballer, then you've got to be fair. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's being a professional footballer and you're not putting your hours in, otherwise yeah. you're not going to be a professional footballer. And it's, I think it's the delivery of that information my way, mm. which makes people think, well, yeah, he's right. It's, it's simple, and it, and it all makes sense, yeah, it's and, and it's effective. truthful. Yeah, nothing but it's, the truth. Well, that's it, because a lot of footballers live in denial, uh, as do coaches, actually, um, and the truth is told, and it just got everyone into shape. We went to play Watford. When we arrived, they said, look, we're really sorry about this, but the, under, the, the coach, the head coach of Watford, wants to play some of the first team squad. And I said, look, mate, we're just a bunch of 19-year-olds. Um, you know, it, uh, he said, well, look, you know, it's, it's just fantastic that we got this game. I said, that we'll give it a go. And he said, look, they're going to put first team players. In fact, he said, they're going to put Isaac Success on, who they've just signed for £30 million. Pound. Uh, and it's going to be it's going to be his first game, yeah. and I said, "Oh my God!" Anyway, we've done a. I think one of the team talks. We both did a team talk that day. Obviously, uh, I think almost. I would have loved a recording of it because you could have brought it to tears. Because again, we spoke about our journey and playing Watford's first team is nothing compared to what we've been through in life and the the, uh, the problems that we faced and the the uh, tough. Um, situations that we've had to face this is actually a stroll in the park this is some actually something you enjoy and it don't matter how big someone is like you just go out and you just give your best and you enjoy it we went to one up <laughs> uh, Danny Ward I think scored the second goal and Isaac success didn't get a touch and they were looking really embarrassed and there was a lot of people staring around the pitch going what's going on here and we were about three minutes from winning and unfortunately, from a corner, they, they nicked an equal, a scrappy equaliser. But they, they loved it. Um, they invited us back. And then they wanted to become a partner in the business, um, which, at the, you know, Premier League club. Come on. You know, um, so from, from those little beginnings with the Mexicans to bringing them back to London, to Barnet, and, um, you know, putting a, a group of kids together, we've had now over four or 500 players We've helped players get into clubs. We've helped players get into jobs. We've helped players get scholarships at university. Um, and, you know, uh, I know these, all the podcasts and all the stuff on TV and, and YouTube and everything's great. I've been there at the Hive on Barnet on a cold Tuesday morning, pissing down with rain, when you've been there and you've turned up for no money. You don't want to get paid. You don't ask for anything. A bit of petrol money. Um, and... Like going that, their paces. go in that gym, having them rowing uh, and 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 doing squats and doing lifts and 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 screaming and barking at them and them just like listening to every single hanging on every word, um, you know, and watching how they um, identify and want want to do well, and in the same breath, me thinking, like 
you know, he goes on at me about my weight and, and he goes on about doing this and doing that. I need to do it. I need to start thinking about these things. Like, I can't just be the the organiser, you know. I've got to do it. You have to do it. Like, you do it. Whenever you do a training session, you do it first and then they have to do it. Yeah. And most of the time, they what, That's why I'll go on to the conversation I had with you, right? When I said to you one time about um, you've got to start leading by example because the kids are looking at you as if to say, what do I have to listen to him for? He's fucking overweight, look at the size of him. Why am I gonna to listen to him? Whereas now, when they come and they'll be like, rah, mm. rah, like, he's like half the size, do you know what I'm saying? So now you're leading by example, because you're saying, look, you remember me, I was 30 stone, bro. What are you talking about, you can't run? What are you talking about, you can't do this? What are you talking about, you can't stop eating this shit? I've done it. Now they've got nothing to say, what are you talking about? You can't tell me nothing, because you've done it. So now you're living testament to this the diet and the work ethic. So now you can actually say, listen, I was 30 stone and I listened to this. Look at me now. Do you know what I mean? All you need to do is apply this to your life and have a 15, 20% and you're gone clear. Yeah. And these are the contracts, these are the football clubs, these are, and this is where you can go. So you're here now on, on this, this shit diet, diet with this shit lifestyle. lifestyle. This, this is where you can be with a good diet, a good lifestyle. lifestyle. And the only thing that's preventing you getting from here to there is you. And, and that's, that's it, it's, it's all, all about you. And that's the beautiful thing about me when I make the youngsters and people know. It's not about me. It's not about me. Yeah, People get the ump with me because I try to tell them how to be a better version of them. The problem is they don't want to be that version because they don't want the hard work, determination or commitment to achieve that goal. So I don't mind people getting the ump with me because I know they're only reflecting their own anger on themselves on me. And I'll take that, it's not a problem. But you are a living testament to working hard Stand focused and achieving goals, Robert Eason. And I'm proud to call you a friend and a fucking partner. You know, and it is, I can't wait. And we started off in the back of Barnet, right? With no equipment, yeah? Just, can you get this, can you get that? Oh, let's do this, let's do that. Oh, let's be here, let's. And we just winged it. And we really did just wing it for the first six months to a year. And it was like coming up with all bad training sessions. It was, it was just crazy. And it was just like, right, as long as they're listening, we're going to get them fit. So I just remembered all the boxing fitness exercises that we learned, yeah, and started giving it to the boxers. I mean, the footballers. And their fitness went through the roof. Fitness went through the roof, but more importantly, their respect. Yeah, but that was the, the reason why their respect came is because of their fitness come. Do you know what I mean? That's what people don't get. To get, you first got to give. So if you give me what I need from you, you will achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve. And because of that, I get the respect. Do you understand? But it's only me leading them to the water. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, look, if you do this, it's like, when I show the kids the brown machines, right? The first time we done the brown machine with these footballers, yeah, they were blowing out of their ass, right? A year later, yeah, I used to dread doing the brown machine because they're all on point now. Do you know what I mean? They're all on point. They're all doing them under a minute. Do you know what I mean? And I've got to work even harder now. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so that, that growth is achievement in growth and achievement in growth and achievement. It will never stop. Do you know what I mean? So when they're going through their training process and they become like, successful, when people say, how do you get fit? Mark's going to pop up in their brain. Do you know what I mean? And Rob's going to pop up in the tactical brain. Like, we're going to be members in their life forever now. Do you know what I mean? Because of the hard work and determination we put in. And that's the one thing that I push and drive everybody to sort of take on board. We're no one special, but we just do what we do correctly. And as long as you behave yourself correctly and conduct yourself correctly in whatever field you want to go in, then you're going to be, will create insurmountability. Well, it's grown and um, it's, it's, it's uh, called timeoutsoccer.com if anyone wants to go on the website, but it's grown to doing camps and obviously we're in America. London. No, uh, but not just in America. In America, we're Watford FC. We're Watford Football Club uh, America. USA. USA. Um, we're the official Watford Football Club Academy in America. Um, and we've done camps in, in uh, Portugal, in Lisbon, in Amsterdam. Uh, and the, the, the funny thing was, like, COVID come, and so many academies shut down, and so many said, I ain't worth doing it. And so many people said, oh, you know, what we're going to do, what we're going to do. Like, you know, when we've been through what we've been through, COVID, you don't give up. No, I mean, you take it on. I mean, bring it on, you know. So we've actually grown. We, 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 our academies went right on until November, until it was, uh, you know, forced on us to shut. 
uh, and then we did Dubai, um, which was open. So, you know, and players from England came over. Uh, now we're doing Milan. So, you know, if anyone tells you you can't do things in COVID, um, well, you know, I'd lost several stone uh, working with you and, and doing stuff. In the last co year of COVID, I've lost two and a half stone. Yeah. Long way to go still. But it's growing. But, you know, it, you can do stuff. You can uh, be positive. Um, and we're, we, our business has actually kept going, grown through, through that, uh, even though it's been difficult. Um, as people, look at what you're doing with the uh, media now. Social media uh, platforms. You know, and, um, you know, even, even today we're discussing another company we're doing which can help people with their mindset and nutrition and, and et cetera. So, listen, you, you keep what you have by giving it away, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, and um, it's, it's, it's only the beginning, really. I think we're like, you know, Early the, doors. for us. So it's, it's been a great, it's, it's, there are a lot of similarities and they're like, you know, it's unorthodox. Like people have said to me, oh, you got Marvin as a trainer and oh, what, you're the, you're the thing and then what, he's the, the coach and what he's, like, you know, when you've they got... don't get the mindset but, but put us all together and it all works because we've all got a common kind of um, background, really, yeah. you know, in many ways. I mean, obviously your, yours is probably more extreme and, yeah. and certain Mine things. Mine is the extreme. But... We've all kind of grew, grown up from the same same spot, and and some of the more privileged kids who come along, who probably got a very nice, comfortable life. You know, they kind of respect it though, because they know they see the hard work. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't a player in America that I never picked up from that airport personally, yeah. and I never dropped off. I never left it to someone else to do. Yeah. I picked every single one up because I knew when they got off that plane, it's the biggest thing for their life to go to America. Like what? A, what a journey, what a thing in their life, like their young life. And some of them I knew come from really, really hard backgrounds. To get off a plane in Florida, I'm gonna have some chauffeur pick them up. You I got pictures? Them up. Have you got pictures of people landing in America? Yeah. So they're, they're the pictures I want to put up as well with yeah. kids landing and yeah, coming over. Yeah, yeah. All them sort of pictures. So any pictures you've got of the journey, mm. I need them over to put them up as we're talking. When I don't go live with a the podcast, then the pictures will come up as you're talking as well. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and one of the things I always sort of, met, like, because I had parents talking to me and saying, oh, like, you know, how's it going to be for them and all that. And I used to say, look, I'm just going to make one promise and I'll still make the same promise today. And if there's any parents listening to this or, 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 or players listening to this, you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I, I made the promise to parents that I'll, I'll make the player, uh, the, their son a better player and a better person. That's all the only guarantee I'll give. And when they, when they took them back to the airport, I used to shake everyone's hand and I used to ask them a simple question. Are you a better player now? And are you a better person? I can't think of more than two people that never answered yes. And the two didn't answer yes, probably just didn't have the uh, thing to answer. Mm. But that's it. And any player that comes now and joins up for Milan or, or London next month, we're going to make you a better player and we're going to make you a better person. That's the guarantee. Guaranteed. We've covered your childhood, <clears throat> your adolescence, your young man, relationships, the ups, the downs. So, what would you say, more than anything, to a younger version of you growing up? Um, it's very, very simple. Um, you've got to get up every day and report for duty. That's what I was told. Um, it, it was a very simple instruction, but you know, if you get up and you get on with things every single day, and I'm not talking about taking a day off because I don't take a day off ever. No. Um, you get up and you think of ways to better yourself, even if it's by something small, like better yourself every day. In, in maybe it can just be knowledge, Maybe learning something, doing something. Yeah. You know, I've managed to learn the piano, uh, cook. And he's good on the piano. Yeah. He's good um, on the piano. You know, I've had... What about time. the cooking yet? Yeah, I'll taste that, <laughs> let you know. Um, I love music. I've, I've been involved in music. I've, I've been involved in a lot of different things because I just... Something I love. Do things that you love. Do things that you have a passion for. Uh, and get up and do it. And meet people. Because, like, you meet people... Uh, a, a very old friend of mine in the West End, an old boy called Corky. Do you ever remember Corky? I do remember Yeah, Corky, he used yeah. to sell like the uh, memorabilia yeah. on uh, British 
flags and yeah. stuff on, on Piccadilly and stuff like that. Corky once said, like, you know, the, the two right people meet, magic can happen. And you've just got to meet people, um, meet good influences in your life and, 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 and you know, work. I mean, it's, I don't think anything comes easy. You've got to work for it. Work hard for it as You've well. You've got to work hard for it. So, the harder you work, the better it comes. Well, uh, my favourite coach is an American football coach called Vince Lombardi. All my players will know that because I bang on about him a lot. But his quote, which is my favourite all-time quote, is the harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. And like you put the work and effort into something, you don't want to give it up because you put the time in. I like that. The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. Yeah. I'm not going to use that. Yeah, you can, I, like I, that. I nicked it. So, um, you know, it, that's it's my... It's true though, isn't it? It is, because you've I've got this fire, yeah, I can't give up now. I can't give up. No. Even like, was it you who asked me if I, do, in, if I thought about committing crime? Yeah, yeah. Like, I couldn't do it. I've come so far, yeah. yeah, that even if you come to me tomorrow morning and said, Marvin, listen, there's 30 mil here, right, all you've got to do is X, Y, Z. I would say to myself right now, do you know what? If it goes wrong and I go to the prison, I'm fucked. And all that work you've put in. It ain't got... worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. So we're going to move on. Um, so it's a good future ahead now. We've got, um, obviously, camps opening in Milan on the 15th. We're back in London on the 29th of March. Um, and we've, we've now got uh, Watford uh, wanting to do more uh, academies in America. So maybe we'll expand to LA as well as Miami. Um, we're going to grow globally. We're talking to people uh, in India about possibility of doing something over there. Uh, so we've got, we got Time Out Soccer, yep. Global Football Academy, Academy, and Watford FC USA. Correct, Correct. yeah. All, right. all part of our football. So Time Out Soccer. Dot com. Dot com. Global Football Academy. On GFA London. GFA, GFA Milan. London, GFA, GFA Lisbon on Instagram. On Instagram. And trust me, yeah. Our network is insurmountable. You can't get a better level of network that we've got. We've got you plugged in everywhere you need to get plugged in. The only thing that has to happen is you have to play your part. We can't help you if you can't play your part. So if you're coming to us telling us you're a top striker, you've got to be a top striker. You can't turn up being a winger or a, 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 a left back and tell me you're a striker. But we'll know what you are, and there's positions for everybody on the pitch, but we've got the insurmountable network to help all of you guys become the footballer that you dream of. And if not the footballer, then the coach, entrepreneur, and life coach. Well, yeah. if you work as hard as we work, then you've got a chance. Yeah, come on, man, it's simple. Look, and just, just look at me for example, yeah? I never thought I'd be at 10 down the street. I never thought I'd be a football academy. I never thought I'd have anything to do with a boxing organisation. I never thought I'd never ever break the law again. But look at that. Lo and behold, everything's come through, isn't it? It's like, just the beginning. And it's just the beginning. And it is just the start. I've only been on this journey for the last five years, 100%, and eight years in transition. But it's easy. We can all do it. So stay safe, stay focused, and stay positive. And stay tuned into nothing but the truth from Marvin Herbert. And we look forward to hearing, speaking, and seeing you again very soon. God bless.